um, this talk will be uh, focused on the uh, self shrinkers of mean curvature flow. So, so for today's talk, so um, we're going to uh, first discuss some basic properties of self shrinkers. So, of mean curvature flow, and then we talk about uh, uh, existence problem for self shrinkers. Uh, we're going to discuss the uh, various approaches to construct the self shrinkers. Then we'll see that the space of the self shrinkers is actually quite complex. Uh, however, we could actually uh, uh, give some classification of the simplest ones, uh, which are the planes, sphere, and the cylinders. And I would like to conclude the talk with some like open questions. So that's the plan. So let's start with the uh, definition of uh, self shrinker. So, so we consider a hypersurface in Euclidean space of dimension n plus one, and we call it a self shrinker uh, if it uh, gives rise a self-similar shrinking solution to mean curvature flow. So namely, uh, we construct this family of uh, hypersurfaces MT for T negative, um, by rescale this uh, hypersurface M by square root minus T. So then this family of uh, hypersurfaces is uh, uh, evolved under the mean curvature flow. That means that the velocity of the point on this uh, hypersurfaces is given by the mean curvature vector. So here I take the uh, normal part of the uh, velocity uh, vector field uh, just because uh, so if we have the velocity is, uh, is tangential to the hypersurface then it's not going to change the, the area of the hypersurface so so that's not going to change the image so geometrically we don't really care about that part so so we're going to restrict to the normal part so and so as as you probably seen in the first lecture so this uh, self shrinkers uh, they arise as the limits of a uh, certain blow up sequence of a uh, mean curvature flow at a uh, space time point. So, hence, it's a model, uh, the behavior of a mean curvature flow. So, when a singularity forms. Okay? So, it's important to uh, study self shrinkers uh, from the uh, viewpoint of a singularity formation of a mean curvature flow. So there are uh, several equivalent uh, way to define the self shrinker. So here at least uh, three of them. So uh, first, so from the um, flow definition, you can deduce the uh, elliptic uh, equation uh, for self shrinkers. So which is the mean curvature of the self shrinkers uh, plus half the normal part of the position vector is equal to zero. So if your self-shrinker, it is actually uh, given by the graph of some function. So, <clears throat> so if this is indeed given by some graph, some function, so then uh, you see that this function u is going to satisfy this equation. So it is a, a nonlinear uh, uh, elliptic equation. So. So if it's actually, so this term here characterizes the drift term, uh, the normal part of the precision vector. Okay, so, and another way to think about uh, self shrinker uh, is that uh, it is a critical point of this uh, Gaussian surface area uh, given by this F of M. So it is the uh, integral uh, of this uh, e to the power minus x squared over four. Uh, multiplied by this uh, constant for pi to the power minus n over two and over m. So, so the constant uh, four pi to the power minus n over two is just to make sure that when m it is uh, actually a hyperplane, then the Gaussian surface area uh, of a hyperplane it is equal to one. So, you if you don't like that normalization, you are free to choose whatever uh, constant you like here. So. And so hence, you can also think about the M as a um, hypersurface in Euclidean space uh, that is minimal, but uh, instead of uh, with respect to the uh, usual Euclidean metric, now you consider the conformal change of the Euclidean metric 
So by the factor e to the power minus s square over uh, 2n. So this metric, uh, if I put it uh, on sphere, so then it's going to looks like uh, some water drop. So this point here, if I do the stereo, uh, graphical projection, is like go to the infinity. And this metric is going to become uh, singular degenerate uh, at this point. So, 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 so the particular name means that the, this metric GIJ defined here uh, is not complete a metric. So since you think about uh, this uh, straight line, the length of straight line in this uh, conformal change uh, metric, then you get this now something uh, infinite. It's actually a finite number. So, so this is uh, uh, some equivalent definition of uh, cell shrinkers. And uh, because of the way we define it, then it uh, uh, suggests uh, some uh, method we're going to use to study it. So, so next I would like to uh, discuss uh, various ways to uh, construct these uh, self shrinkers. Okay, so uh, it is a nonlinear PDE. So in general, so we don't expect to solve it uh, uh, in a closed form. So, however, so if we uh, start with uh, self, you know, uh, start with uh, looking for uh, self shrinkers with uh, very strong symmetry properties, then we can reduce this uh, PDE to an uh, ordinary differential equation. So by that, so one can find that, so uh, perhaps the simplest uh, uh, self-shrinkers are this uh, uh, hyperplanes and round sphere and generalized cylinders. So let's know that the hyperplane here, so I've been a little weak here. So it doesn't mean that any hyperplane. So this hyperplane has to pass through the origin of the um, uh, Euclidean space because the equation itself is not a translation invariant. So if, so you have this uh, normal part of the position vector in the equation. So if, so the mean coverage of hyperplane is always zero. And if your hyperplane not passing through the origin, then you get some non-zero term from the uh, normal part of the precision vector. So this hyperplane need to pass through the origin. And uh, likewise, the round sphere also need to center that origin. And the radius of the round sphere cannot be arbitrary. So it is uh, always equal to uh, square root 2n because the equation is, does not uh, have a dilation invariant. So property, so then you can't uh, uh, let the radius of the sphere change. And likewise, the generalized cylinder is also the axis has to be through the, the part of the factor has to contain the origin and the cross section of the cylinder is also uh, fixed. <coughs> so, so besides the, this exa simplest example, so uh, Sigurd Agnant uh, in 19, around the 1990, so he studied this uh, self-shrinkers uh, with the rotation symmetry. So then you, from the variational uh, definition of uh, self-shrinkers, then this reduced to find the geodesics in the plane that's uh, uh, with respect to some uh, 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 Riemannian metric, but the Riemannian metric is, not, is going to degenerate uh, as you approach into some axis of the plane. So anyway, so, but, uh, by this uh, rotation symmetry assumption, the solution to this uh, self shrinker equations become a, a you know, uh, the, the self shrinker equation become ODE. So then, uh, still, uh, what is amazing is that like, uh, even if it's ODE, so you can you can still find the solution in a closed form. So he actually used this uh, topological shooting method to show the existence of some solution, but you don't have a closed formula for the solution. So then he, his solution is actually a topological Tauri. So, and so there's an open problem in the field that uh, uh, can you find the all rotation symmetry self shrinkers? This sounds, uh, in, in other situation, uh, like people study like a Ritchie Soliton or something like that. 
So usually you, when you put the rotational symmetric condition that is a strong enough that you deal with the ODE, then you expect that you can find all possible solutions. And this is the exception. So uh, as far as I know, it's still that's the uh, way so there's uh, some attempts by um in the uh, molar later uh, early on so they can uh you know give some uh, characterization of this uh, rotation symmetric cell shrinkers uh, for instance some topological constraints okay so um yeah so it would be really nice to um prove this uniqueness uh, even under this uh, rotationally symmetric case. Okay, right. So another approach uh, to produce this self shrinkers, uh, which is quite successful, is by this uh, uh, gluing techniques. So, uh, so I mentioned two of them. So uh, first one is uh, you can try to desingularize a uh, plane with a sphere. And then to pr prove the existence of this uh, family of non-compact shrinkers in R3. So these examples are non-compact and they all have a, a very high genius and then you can let the genius tend to infinity. So, and they all has a one end, so the end is actually asymptotic to a cone at infinity. Okay, so, and using similar techniques, so one can also desingularize the sphere with this uh, eigen torus that uh, I uh, presented in the last class. So then, um, then you can produce this compact family of compact cell shrinkers in R three with high genius. So, so, um, so so far this gluing technique uh, uh, we know work in uh, low dimension, but uh, so similar gluing technique has been successfully carried out uh, for for instance uh, constant mean curvature hypersurfaces in general dimension by uh, Christine uh, Brenner and uh, Nika, uh, Nikos Kaplias. So it would be nice to see that uh, whether this gluing technique uh, can also work for in higher dimension. So. For instance, can you desingularize this hyperplane and the sphere in higher dimension to produce uh, new self shrinkers in general uh, dimension? Oh, anyway, so this uh, example already uh, exhibits the complexity of the space of uh, self shrinkers, right? Because now you can have uh, basically for any large enough genus, you can actually have some self shrinkers. Uh, with that, uh, with that high genius, and so there's no control of the topology uh, in essential, right? So, and it's also mystery. So sometimes you, uh, so in this example, you're desingularizing this uh, uh, plane and the sphere, right? So uh, then one may wonder, okay, so what about if I try to desingularize the uh, uh, plane with cylinder or sphere with cylinder? And I think people try, but uh, uh, technically speaking, that not not working. So it's a kind of a mystery. So how do you know uh, a priori that uh, you can desingularize uh, something to produce a rigorous example or not? And yeah, so so yes, I should say that. Uh, so this uh, gluing technique um, result was proved uh, by Kaplias, Klein, Muller, and independently uh, Han Guyan. So the, the difference of, so their work actually appear at uh, the same time. So if you look at the archive, but since the journal has a different uh, backlog, so that results, the publication year is quite different. So, okay, so anyway. Okay, so, uh, so another approach is uh, this variation of approach. So since you can think about it as uh, uh, you can think of self shrinkers as a minimum with respect to this uh, conformal change of this uh, Euclidean metric, right? So it's a critical point of some functional. So then one can try to uh, use variational approach. So a naive approach is like you try to do some minimizing procedure in certain homological class or you know homotopy class. It doesn't work because uh, uh, by result of coding mini so none of these self-shrinkers are stable. So they have uh, some common 
unstable modes like uh, translation or dilations. So, so the self shrinkers, uh, there's no stable self shrinkers. So then you can't uh, use the minimizing approach to construct self shrinkers. So, however, so one could try to uh, consider this min max approach, uh, which is a, a, a very robust uh, approach to construct uh, saddle points for a functional. So, 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 so here, so since we are, uh, the, since the conformal change of the matrix is not complete, so then uh, one can't uh, appeal to the standard uh, Amgram Pitts uh, min max theory or uh, Simon Smith theory. So one has to uh, do it by hand. Um, so this was achieved by uh, Xin, uh, Dan Ketover and Xin Zhou early on. And based on their uh, theory, so one can construct uh, various uh, self shrinkers in low dimension as well as in higher dimension. Uh, yeah, so here I mentioned some uh, recent uh, progress uh, in this direction. So, so Dan Ketover uh, was able to construct this uh, self shrinkers in R3 uh, of this genius. So uh, in contrast to the gluing technique, so in which you have to allow the genius be very large. So in the, the advantage of the variational approach is that you can produce shrinkers uh, of low genius. And uh, so I think Dan's uh, Catover's approach is like, uh, so kind of, uh, uh, he actually developed this uh, 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 min-max theory uh, in the equivalent uh, setting. So, and very recently, I think uh, Banzano and Guyan the shows, so they actually show that, so for each genus, you can find uh, at least the one self shrinkers in R3. And so in higher dimension, so um, by studying this uh, free boundary version of a min max construction, and then combined with some approximation uh, scheme. So then uh, Ao Sun and uh, Zhu Chao Wang and Xin Zhou, so, uh, they show there exist the infinite many self shrinkers uh, in Euclidean space of um, dimension n plus one. And this again, so the n is uh, uh, between two and six. So, 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 so that's basically the existence um, using this uh, variational approach. So as one can see that, uh, so now we use this uh, various approach uh, to the existence of uh, self shrinkers. So it's uh, basically virtually hopeless to uh, pursue a complete classification uh, of self shrinker as we uh, would hope, right? So if we know that, then that will be uh, do us a huge favor in understanding the singularity of a flow, right? So, so with the example, so then it seems like a hopeless. So however, so, uh, under certain conditions, then we can give a classification of the simplest self shrinkers, which has this uh, planes, sphere, or cylinders. And so perhaps the first classification is due to this uh, uh, law. So uh, they studied the uh, uh, self shrinkers in R2. So in this talk, so the self shrinkers we consider is a hypersurface. So it has its, uh, its curve. So our definition of hypersurface is uh, very restricted. So it is a uh, co-dimension one probably embedded some manifolds uh, in Rn plus one. So, so then under this assumption, then it, they classify this uh, self shrinkers in a plane has to be straight lines or the round circle. On the other hand, so uh, in their pa same paper, so if you allow self-intersection, so they also produce this uh, family of uh, beautiful examples uh, of immersed self-shrinkers. So, so this is uh, basically a story about uh, one-dimensional. So then if we go uh, one dimension higher, so consider self-shrinking surfaces in R3, so there's a, a beautiful classification result of uh, Simone Brenly. So uh, which shows that, so uh, the only genus zero self shrinkers in R3 are these planes, round sphere uh, or cylinder. So, uh, so 
Yeah, of course, you can't drop the genus condition as we've seen from the uh, examples, right? So, so this is uh, actually this is a uh, very nice classification result that we will need it in uh, later of the talk. So in general dimensions, so um, there are some classifications. So um, here I just mentioned one of them. So um, so it is uh, um, about this uh, mean convex self shrinker. So if we consider this mean convex self shrinkers, so mean convex means that the mean curvature uh, is bigger than equal to zero. So so then you can uh, show that uh, this has to be hyperplanes, uh, round sphere, or general, generalized cylinders. So this was the first proved by Huskin. So uh, in this 1990 uh, paper, so he proved this claim for the closed self shrinkers, closed mean convex self shrinker. Then in a later paper, so he uh, extend this result to uh, non-compact mean convex self shrinkers, but then he need to assume the second fundamental form or the curvature of the self shrinker is actually uniformly bounded. So the argument is actually uh, not a very complicated uh, at all. So it's uh, based on some maximum principle that uh, he will study this uh, quantity, uh, which is like this. So you try to derive the uh, differential inequality for this and this separately. You know, for, for this one, you you probably need some uh, variant of assignment identity. So, so then um, you consider the differential inequality for the quotient. Here you can do this because, okay, so let's, you know, for some basic uh, actually, so a bigger So, if you this, then you can. Um, you can you can prove this uh, uh, this theorem. So okay, so so then uh, more recently, coding equality so um, was able to uh, remove this uh, assumption on the second fundamental form. So 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 nowadays we know that uh, so you don't so a prior you you your self shrinker may has a second fundamental form or curvature blow up at infinity or um, become unbounded at infinity, but uh, you can still prove this uh, uh, classification theorem. Okay, so that is about the mean convex self shrinkers. Okay, so yeah, as I mentioned uh, uh, yesterday, so um, there, there is a conjecture about this uh, generic singularities in mean curvature flow, which states that so, if one starts from a generic closed surfaces, so then one could expect the only spherical cylindrical singularity developers in the flow. So a key to address that conjecture uh, is to uh, consider this uh, quantity, uh, which we call the Kony Minikaze entropy. So here I wanna give you more background on the definition or the introduction of that entropy. So the starting point is like, uh, let's consider this uh, uh, Gaussian surface area F, uh, X0 and T0. So let's note that uh, when X0 is uh, zero and T0 is equal to one, that's exactly the Gaussian surface area we uh, just uh, introduced, okay? Right, so, so the point of this uh, uh, functional F is that, so a critical point of this function F uh, it is exactly the time t equal to minus t0 slice of this self-similarly shrinking solution uh, given by this formula here. So why we would like to have this is uh, uh, a priori if I flow, right? So a priori you don't know where and when you're going to have a singularity. Then you need to do this blow up analysis uh, at where it becomes singular. But a priori, how do you know that uh, when uh, where you're going to become singular, right? So then you naturally would allow this uh, X, you know, X zero, the, the, the various of the uh, scale and the centers, right? So however, if we fix, so then I, exactly as I just said, right? So now if I fixing this X zero and the T zero, then 
so this quality may not actually monotone uh, along the flow, right? So and so so to fix that, so then one should consider this coding mean quasi entropy, which uh, is taking the supremal of this function f and over this uh, uh, center x zero and the t scale t zero. Okay, so if one consider this. Uh, Minkowski entropy. So then one can check that. So this it is an invariant. The entropy is invariant under this uh, rigid motion and dilations, and it is uh, non-increasing under the uh, mean curvature flow. And moreover, the critical points of this entropy are exactly the self shrinkers. So among other results, so so coding mini causes so proof that the only entropy stable self shrinkers are these uh, simplest ones. So then we have hyperplane, round sphere, and generalized cylinders. So what do we mean by entropy stable? So think about uh, some examples I uh, talk about in earlier slides, right? So we have this uh, examples in R three of high genius, right? You take uh, one of that example, right? So then by this coding mean quality result, it's entropy unstable. It means that so you can actually find perturbation of this entropy unstable self shrinker, so that uh, the perturbed uh, surface has a strictly less entropy. Now we know that the entropy is monotone, uh, decreasing under the flow. So now you restart your flow with this perturbed one, and then you're never going to uh, you know, uh, hit the original self-shrinker because that has the strictly bigger entropy, right? So then you use this notion of entropy to uh, get around the, 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 the unstable ones. So of course, so what I described is, has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's not a, it's, it's not a, a, a conclusion of the story because uh, we only see this uh, self shrinkers uh, locally near the singular point right so if we know the flow originally is entire you know graph over the self shrinkers so then what we said it is uh, uh, rigorous but uh, but since we only know that the flow near the singularity locally you know look like a part of the self shrinkers then what i describe is not enough to actually Prove this generic mean curvature flow conjecture, but however, it did give us some uh, good, you know, evidence that you may actually hope to use this uh, entropy notion to, um, to to study that conjecture. Okay. So, so and it's also very interesting to note that so there is a, a relation between this uh, entropy stability and the mean convexity. That's exactly how. Uh, this coding mean quasi was able to remove this uh, curvature boundedness in Huskin's original classification theorem. Okay. So, so basically, if you know the self shrinker does not split off a line, then you can show that the uh, self shrinker is entropy stable is equivalent to saying the entropy uh, the self shrinker is a mean convex. So, with the stability, it is some like a um, variational property then you can relate it to a spectral property for this linearized operator of self shrinker which is given by some uh, uh, basically a drifted Laplacian operator so then you can make some like a pointwise estimate to you know some integral estimate then you can you know uh, get rid of this pointwise assumption on the second fundamental form so so this coding mean causes classification result um, um, opens uh, several new avenues to this further development on generic singularities in mean curvature flow. Here, just mentioned a couple of them. So, a um, couple of years ago, I think Chodosh, Toy, and Mentolidis shows um, they will they 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 they, they show that uh, in in R three, so you can start with the generic uh, closed surfaces, then you can show that the, so the flow will develop only um, higher multiplicity singularities 
or some singularities that is asymptotic to a cylinder. So, and later I think uh, uh, also in Jin uh, Xing uh, so they also uh, study uh, this uh, generic singular generic properties for uh, this mean curvature flow in various uh, uh, setup. Okay, so so this is uh, uh, about uh, this uh, uh, entropy stable self shrinkers. So uh, in short, basically we know that uh, so. Um, no hope to classify all self shrinkers. However, so with the you know with the goal, for instance, to address this uh, generic mean curvature flow conjecture. So, so the entropy stable ones, those that cannot be perturbed away, can be restricted to this uh, simplest uh, examples. So, this gives some hope. And moreover, so. Uh, because of this uh, uh, kind of dynamical approach to this uh, mean generic mean curvature flow, so uh, Cody Human and Nikolai White proposed to uh, study the you know the relation between uh, hypersurfaces and uh, entropy. So so here I mentioned one of them. So so namely, so they uh, they conjecture that so for dimension n between two and six. So um, there exists uh, some positive constant epsilon in, so that depends on this dimension only. So now if you have a self shrinker um, that is a non-flat and that is not a round sphere, then one can show that the entropy of such self shrinker uh, is bounded from back by the entropy of the round sphere uh, plus this epsilon. So I just want to mention, uh, so useful calculation. So there's a calculation um, due to Andrew Stone, so which says that, so the entropy of a circle is between uh, three half and two, and the entropy of the sphere uh, is decreasing with the dimension of the sphere. And this converts to square root two. So in other words, so basically it uh, says that the round sphere uh, is conjectured to minimize um, the entropy among all non-flat self shrinker. So, um, so, 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 okay. So, so, so one remark is like, so let's observe that. So, so basically by definition of this entropy, right? So if you have uh, any, hypersurfaces, so then you can show that entropy has to be bigger than or equal to one because a prior you can compute the entropy of the hyperplane, which has to be one. And now you have a hypersurface, then you can pick a point on the hypersurface and then you dilate, you see it's convert to tangent plane. And then your entropy is defined to be take a supremo over all the dilations and the translation, then it has to be bigger than or equal to the Entropy of the tangent plane, right? So then it's bigger than equal to one, right? So, and moreover, so it's a very deep result to uh, break here. So, from the regularity, so, so this brackets regularity theorem actually told you that so if you have a non flat self shrinker in Rn plus one, then this shrinker must has entropy uh, strictly bigger than one. So there is a gap. So between the entropy of non-flat cell shrinkers and the hyperplane, so which is given by this uh, uh, in explicit um, constant delta n. So another way to interpret uh, this calling in the cause of white result uh, conjecture is that so they're actually asking, so can you find the optimal delta n in this uh, brackets regularity theorem? Okay, so and their conjecture is that the, the, the optimal one should be given by the entropy of the sphere minus one. So that's another way to interpret their conjecture. And so there was also analog conjecture for minimal surface as well. So for minimum cone, right? So the elliptic analog of this uh, self shrinkers is this minimum cone, 
And there's the analog uh, re local regularities there due to Allard, and then you can uh, try to uh, study the optimal uh, gap in this other regularity theorem. And I think human and white, uh, before this conjecture, they made some progress towards uh, that one for minimum cone as well. So, so this is an, uh, not trivial, even, even we already know that the entropy stable self shrinker has to be this plane sphere or cylinder, right? But uh, if you think about the more or less space of this uh, self shrinkers, right? So, you know, you don't actually know that uh, how this uh, self shrinker be connected by this uh, gradient flow line. So then, you know, you can't uh, really use directly appeal to this classification of entropy stable one to prove this uh, conjecture here, right? So, so then one has to uh, use some other idea to, 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 to see this, okay? So, okay, so uh, then I would like to report some um, progress uh, on this conjecture. So it's, so it's not a very recent one, but uh, uh, yeah, so, but that's basically is, uh, what we know so far. So, so for, in, in the same paper, so actually uh, calling him and Nicole Y, they uh, proved that, so uh, for every n bigger than equal to two, so one can find a positive constant epsilon depends on n. So if one consider self shrinker that is a closed means compact without boundary. And if we assume that it's not around the sphere, uh, then you can show that uh, entropy of such self shrinker uh, is bigger than the entropy of the sphere plus this constant epsilon. And it's the it's the circle, it's not the sphere, so that's really not that or as fun. Yes. Oh, I mean the the yes. It's really the I uh, guess. So I will explain uh, in a minute. So, so if we so with Jacob um, Bernstein, so um, we we show that uh, in this extremely low dimensions, namely in R three. So uh, if one consider self shrinker that's a not plain round sphere cylinder, then you have the entropy is bigger than the entropy of circle plus epsilon. So here. Uh, one can show that, so the entropy of the product of any hypersurface with R is equal to itself. So we write uh, entropy of circle, but so what we're really thinking about is the entropy of the cylinder. It's just a way to write it. It's not typo, yeah. So, so in this extremely low dimension, basically we know that the, the lowest, uh, the, the self shrinker has the, um, uh, the you know, the, the, the you know, basically, so the lowest uh, entropy is attained by plane, and then the next one is the round sphere, and the next one is the cylinder, but then the fourth one uh, is uh, it's a little mystery. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, so so basically, so then this uh, address um, their conjecture in dimension two, so, but uh, uh, we don't know, uh, the conjecture is open in 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 general dimension. Okay, so so and uh, uh, I will ex try to explain a little bit the idea of the proof and then show uh, why we don't know this conjecture in general dimension. So what's the uh, stumbling block is okay. So so uh, let's first uh, uh, I want to first make some uh, uh, remark or observation. Uh, um, about self shrinkers in R3 with this low entropy assumption. So, uh, so, so in this uh, low dimension situation, so one can uh, use this uh, Huisken monotisic formula and plus the wide stratification theorem and plus the classification of the amplitude lower uh, for the uh, self shrinking curves to see that. Uh, so there M has a three possibility. So first one is the M is compact. And second is M is a plane with round cylinder. And third is that M is non-compact and to a cone with isolated singularity. 
So then in short, it's like uh, either M is uh, trivial or M is closed or M is asymptotic conical. So, so this means that, so we can restrict our attention to self shrinkers that is either closed or asymptotic conical. Okay. And since we would argue by contradiction, so we would uh, just assume the entropy of the self shrinker uh, has this uh, upper bound. So you notice that the upper bound is slightly uh, bigger than the, the goal we're trying to prove. Uh, I, I, so I will, I will explain a little bit later in the proof. Okay, so, okay, so, so we're not interested in the trivial case. So we assume this M is not uh, this trivial uh, shrinkers, namely the round sphere, hyperplane, or, uh, or cylinder. Right, so, and, right, so, so, so then we know that this M cannot be entropy stable by this coding mini causes classification, right? Because they said entropy stable one has to be of this uh, form, a uh, sphere, a plane, or cylinder, right? Right, so what that means, is that so you can find the perturbation of this original self shrinker uh, we call it m prime so this m prime satisfies these properties so you can actually perturb m to one set so and you can see that this if m is closed then the perturbation the perturbed surface m prime is also closed if m is asymptotic conical then the perturbed and prime is also asymptotic conical. So, and what is uh, important is this uh, last two conditions. So uh, you decrease the entropy uh, strictly. So you get uh, the entropy of the perturbed one is uh, strictly less than the original one. And uh, you also get the, 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 this, this uh, variant of this mean curvature uh, has a sign. So here the n sub m prime denotes the uninormal uh, on m prime. Okay. So getting certain uh, mean, you know, condition like this is uh, very important as it's, it's usually preserved under this flow. Okay. So then the next step is like uh, try to apply this mean curvature flow to this perturbed surface m prime. And it, one can yields the sum uh, uh, mean curvature flow, uh, mt. So here we choose, for convenience, we choose the starting time to be minus one. Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't matter, you can choose whatever starting time, but then you need to change the, 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 this second item a little bit. So for convenience, we choose the starting time to be minus one. And this capital T is like uh, the maximum time this classical mean flow exists. So a priori, you know, we don't know whether it exists uh, forever or, you know, we, we develop some finite time singularity, right? So, and then we uh, appeal to this uh, uh, observation of uh, Smozik. So um, it's again, some maximum principle argument. So then you can show the sign of this quantity involved this mean curvature uh, is actually preserved under the flow, right? So when T equal to, uh, minus one, that's exactly the quantity uh, ha we have in the previous slides, okay? So, so then one can show that uh, one of the following occurs. So either we have a finite time singularity. Uh, so then one can uh, show that this singularity has to be mean convex. And then uh, we appeal to the coding mini causal classification of a mean convex. Uh, self shrinkers to see that it has to be a cylinder, but then that's a contradiction, right? So you know that the entropy of the M prime is strictly less than the entropy of this cylinder uh, split off a line, right? And on the other hand, the mean convex self, -shrinker, uh, self shrinkers has to be uh, SK cross Rn minus K, right? So, and monoticity of the Entropy tells you that uh, the entropy at the singularity uh, is uh, less than the entropy at the initial surface. Then you get a contradiction, right? So only what what um, what happened for this 
uh, t equal to infinity. So namely, so you could have a, a mean curvature flow, you know, that exists for a uh, long time, right? So here I should mention that so in the coding even I mean how the white set have so since they start with the flow printer, so then everything is closed, then this flow MP must become similar in finite time by some and then you so you may have a flow that exists for all time, no singularity form, right? So when this happens, so when one observes that, so if I substitute t equal to zero in that uh, quantity uh, in the observation of a small dick, so then the mean curve term disappear because t equal to zero. What you left is this x dot normal term. But what that means of a, a, on a hypersurface, you have a, the precision vector inner product with the normal has a sign. It means that it's a bouncer domain, which is a star shaped, which means that it is actually graph over, you know, it's a radio graph over the part of the sphere, right? So, so in particular, what that means in two dimension, it means that uh, M0 has to be a disk in the topological sense, right? So, and so in this t equal to infinity case, right? So this flow uh, doesn't divide singularity. So then M prime, which is the minus one times less, topologically speaking is the same as the M0, which has, has to be a disk as well. And hence for M, because it's a small perturbation of M prime. So, so now you have a shrinker, which is topological disk. And then Brando's uh, classification theorem tells you that it has to be flat, then it's a contradiction, right? You see from this argument, so the, the Brando's classification uh, plays an indispensable role, and which is uh, not known or even not true in higher dimension. So that's why we kind of only know this conjecture of coding human mean cause white in dimension two, not uh, in general dimension. Okay. So as a summary, so I hope I've uh, show you that. So uh, the space of these self shrinkers could be very large and complex. So however, so the generic ones, uh, those cannot be put away, I expect it to be spherical and, or cylindrical. And so if we look at the self shrinkers with a sufficiently low entropy, then we can expect those self shrinkers uh, geometrically uh, simple, okay? So there's certainly uh, several open questions, uh, uh, you know, uh, of these uh, self shrinkers, they remain uh, widely open. So, so first, so can you prove this uh, conjecture of coding in mean cosy white that uh, the round sphere minimizes entropy among this non-flat cell shrinkers in dimension bigger than equal to three? And second, so one can think about the uh, cell shrinkers uh, as a special class of uh, Asian solution to mean curvature flow. So Asian solutions by its name means that uh, a solution to the flow that exists for all negative times. So then one can see if one can uh, generalize this uh, classification of uh, self shrinkers with low entropy to Asian solutions with low entropy. And this in dimension two, so as this uh, it was proved by Chow Yi Hushkovich, Hirschkowicz. And, and the very nice consequence of this classification, it is uh, this uh, uh, verification of the mean convex neighborhood theorem, which says that if you see, you know, the blow up limits of a, of a mean curvature flow is given by a cylinder or a sphere, then you can show that in a space-time neighborhood of the singular point, the flow is actually mean convex even though they may not mean, be mean convex globally, but near the singular points, you have the mean convexity. So then a lot of the surgery uh, 
theory for mean convex mean curve flow can be generalized to mean curvature flow uh, with a cylindrical spherical singularity because this you can localize the uh, uh, many estimates. Okay, so, and at last, so I would mention that uh, can you classify this uh, shrinkers of low entropy in higher co-dimension? There was actually uh, analog conjecture proposed in this uh, uh, recent paper of coding Minikazi. So in higher dimension, in higher co-dimension, so uh, the difficulty is like, uh, so here in co-dimension one, you can talk about uh, one set of needs. There's some like a topological order, um, you know, uh, hidden in the question. So in, in higher co-dimension, so, um, you know, you, you, you can't talk about uh, one set of needs of this kind of a property, right? So then a lot of the technique we use in co-dimension one, uh, it's not uh, going to work in higher co-dimension. That's uh, still um, very natural and uh, interesting question to consider. Uh, as I, I should mention that uh, certainly uh, you can easily see that uh, the code called the entropy uh, can be extended to higher co-dimension. So because the monotonic formula, even though I presented in co-dimension one, is actually true in higher co-dimension as well. So you could define this notion of entropy and also the monoticity also extend to higher co-dimension maker flow. But uh, we don't, so we don't know the classification or we don't have a good understanding about the geometry or topology of this uh, self shrinkers of low entropy in higher co-dimension. Okay, so I, this is some open question I can think about uh, for now, but uh, I'm sure, you know, you can develop more questions from thinking about just these three simple questions. So I think uh, uh, that's more or less what I want to talk about today. And thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you, question. So the non-compact shrinkers, uh, you, you said they are always uh, simply conical or something else? Oh. So I think in, in R3, so um, I proved before that, uh, so uh, any non compact self shrinkers, so is either asymptotic conical or asymptotic cylindrical. And there is a conjecture due to Tom Human and that the asymptotic cylindrical uh, self shrinker shouldn't exist. So in conjectly speaking, so usually expect that either self shrinker is plain cylinder or asymptotic conical yeah and the questions so the 2013 uh, coding mini Kotsi where they do the um, conjecture for uh, or they prove for uh, closed surface the closed surface yeah hypersurfaces the lower bound uh, of the entropy is it with the same methods like like you indicated for uh, dimension three like when you were Oh. doing a uh, like um, perturbation of the manifold and... yeah so uh it's a similar essential but uh, i think so they don't apply mean curvature flow to m prime so so they apply a rescaled mean curve flow to m prime but uh, since it's differed by some uh rescaling and the change variable so they are essentially same flow but uh, in a geometric sense, but in analytic sense, they're different. The disadvantage of uh, their viewpoint is like, uh, so then you, can, you can't see the flow for t bigger than equal to zero. So their flow is basically in, in our notation or in our setup is like a mt, but for t between minus one and zero, because in their setup, they can guarantee that singularity happened before t equal to zero. So, but, uh, um, you know, essentially, but I don't think uh, very different. Yeah. And I think our contribution is just like a make the observation that, so uh, when T equal to zero, you see the starship thing appear. So then that's it, yeah. I have a second question. You say in the open problems, the last one for higher co-dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are some results already in 2020. Yeah, they proved some results. So the paper is uh, published in this uh, publication IGS. So they, they, they study this regularity of complexity of parabolic systems in the very general setup. 
So, but uh, they, they're not uh, uh, proving something. Um, uh, so, so for instance, they can't say that, okay, so can you show them sphere still minimizing, I'd say, you know, S2 still minimizing uh, this entropy among this uh, uh, cell shrinkers of co-dimension two in R4. So some, they, they made a conjecture, but they can't prove it. But they still have some results around this uh, complexity, regularity of uh, shrinkers or in, in general, uh, like uh, flows, yeah. Other questions? Yeah, again, follow up Arena's question in the high core dimensions, mm -hmm. the special case, uh, special energy, mean oh. uh, So is this any, because this is very special. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm not aware about results, but uh, I think you make a good point. So it's probably a good idea to start with, uh, you know, the, the, uh, instead of a general mean curvature flow in higher co-dimension, but to focus on the Lagrange mean curvature flow in higher co-dimension. I, but I'm not aware the re, uh, results uh, for that. Yeah, I know there's some recent progress um, on this uh, Lagrange mean curvature flow, especially uh, in you know co-dimension. Um, especially in dimension four. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Also, back to one of the prove you mentioned there, mm -hmm. if you have a stable mm -hmm. uh, entropy uh, self drinker mm -hmm. and uh, in the neighborhood you can find M prime, mm -hmm. it's possible M prime could be stable or must be unstable. Oh, M prime needn't to be a shrinker. I'm sorry, I don't need this be shrinker. Yeah, yeah, M prime okay. is actually not a shrinker. Okay, yeah. so in general, not necessarily yeah, a yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, so, so, the, so basically, uh, so, so the, the perturbation is constructed using, using some uh, uh, first eigen function to the linearized output. So, so, so then you see, then, so, so after the perturbation, so the M prime uh, no longer is under by the, the mean curvature. That's the question. Okay, but not less than